Already time for Chapter 7, 001, Timeline, Keyframes, 12th Feb, 19. These screens really have a note for me, so I know what I'm teaching people in a bullet point system. So top is the Timeline, Keyframes. Dotted around the outside is to highlight that we've got a bunch of blue stuff, which I'll go through. So we're going to select one keyframe, or se select all of them, and then move them. I'm going to show you J and K on the keyboard to time frame jumping, which means we go from this one up to this one in literally one click or one tap of the keyboard. Double click blue frame dot, which means if I double click one of these, I will see that I can type individual values. And the white line time reverses. See this line here, which is grey, I'm calling it a white line on mouse hover. These skills can be investigated by right click or double click on pretty much anything. That's why I'm spending so much time making these videos. OK, so let's have a look at select one, select all. So what we're doing here is we're in Lisbon and we are looking at um, the marina area with a lovely cruise ship and then we're going to go and have a look at the castle and some other things. And you can see that this is just a you know a template thing which really does jump around a lot. The whole point of it was select one, select all, and that is if I click somewhere you can see that all of them are white. If I click one area they've all gone blue. What I can do is I can drag a few things around, look by selecting a load of them and then moving them all together. If I select just one like that, I can then move just one on its own. Then I can start to move things around. Okay, so if we go back to the beginning and I go over and say that select one, select all, that is a thing. If I hover on, say, um, one here and select it in blue, I really want to do just one and then I right click, I can see that I've got some options. Let's do the one which says, I'm doing this particular J and K on keyboard, let's cover that one. So where we are there, if I hit K, you can see I've jumped to the next key frame. That's J and K, so that's quite a good technique to go through, say from frame 336 back to 253 in one tap of the keyboard. Uh, keyboard. Double click blue frame dot type value. Let's do that one next. So if we go and look at, say, a double click, and I'm going to say on this timeline here, let's go down to this one. Um, I know that's quite small. I'm going to leave it at zoom 100%. So if I double click, that value, what happens is I get a pop-up which gives me the exact longitude value. If I looked at, say, the tilt here, and I wanted to double-click the tilt, I will get an exact value that I can type into. I could go and hover over tilt and drag it up and drag it down. I could click once and type. The main thing, of course, is that if you move the playhead, it just snaps back without saving. So let's see, double click, blue frame dot type value, white line time reverse, yeah. So, so with this one, what happens is that you'll see that as the time line goes along the boat, or the ship rather, is going from right to left. Can you see that the way it's going starts in the right of frame and it's moving towards the left. If I hover and time reverse the frames, then what happens is that this time the boat is appearing to move in the opposite direction. So we can do right click, time reverse. You can do that anyway. Where you see the mouse going over, right click, time reverse. Last part here is investigate by right click, double click. So what that means is that anywhere down here, anywhere at all, we can do a right click and we can change things. A value graph, by the way, is um, oop, keyframe editor. So pretty much anywhere we can right click on things. 
Also, double clicking, if I double click in that area, it actually doesn't do anything. If I double click here, it doesn't do anything. Sometimes they do things, so you need to investigate them. I'm going to stop there because in particular, what you'll notice is that with this particular animation that is not really a project, it's going through and you can see that near the end we've got a really busy visual area that is totally totally wrong but what we could do is start adjusting things by selecting and moving them down selecting moving them down and then we can start to even things out if we wish and then you'll find that things get a lot lot slower the other one of course is copy and pasting so if I go through to I'm just just doing this as a I'm not saying this is right or wrong, it's just a visual area. So in other words, if we go down and just play that just a tiny bit, you can see we're moving around all the time very quickly and it's jumping. So if we go down and say we wanted to, let's see if this works actually, and I wanted to do control copy and then say control paste. For some reason, yeah, that they've actually pasted over here. I wonder why they've pasted over there then. Uh, well, it's, I've lost control of it. The point of it is really simple, and that is that we are looking in this 7001 of the timeline keyboard frames and how we can select one and all, move around very easily with J and K, double click on blue frames to enter specific values, which is pretty important um, when we get moving, because what you'll notice, and I've sent feedback, is last thing is that, and I'm going to do attributes in the next video, but just as a, a sneak peek, if you like, is that what happens is that if I wanted to do the tilt and I wanted to go forward, you see I've got my mouse is going tons and tons and tons of screen. But if I wanted to select here and left click and go to the left, I can only go a small amount of distance before I run out of screen space. So watch, you know, see I'm going down here and I'll get to like what, not 75 and I can't physically go any further so I have to unclick it and then keep going down but if I wanted to click and drag to the right I've got tons and tons and tons of space and I've sent that as feedback because in an equal society um, it's pretty obvious that where I am now with my mouse I move to the left but I've got five or six times more space to move to the right hence the double click and then we can enter a value as we wish to I wonder if this does anything double click Sorry, double click doesn't actually do anything there because you're actually keyframe keyframing that dot. Okay, six uh, sorry, seven double O one is finished.